beautician Lucy Pallo had never experienced the lows of depression and anxiety until she started taking pregabalin. That was the only change, that's the only thing that we can pin it to is the Lyrica, that's all. Two years ago, Ms Pallo, who has type 1 diabetes, went to a doctor complaining of restless legs. She just said it will help you sleep and if the pain gets worse, up your dose. Like, I thought it was safe. They didn't tell me what was in it. She upped her daily dose to 250 milligrams and within eight months she was addicted and critically ill. So I ended up losing about 35 kilos in about three months. So I was put in hospital for about four or five weeks in ICU in Melbourne. Pregabalin is now the most prescribed drug for pain on the PBS and last year alone more than four million subsidised scripts were issued in Australia. More than a third of those were in regional areas where specialist pain clinics are scarce. Of course there's been a lot of publicity about the dangers of opioids and so pregabalin's a bit of a stopgap there and being used perhaps to fill a need. Drug manufacturer Pfizer says it continuously monitors the safety of its medicines and that pregabalin improves the quality of life for thousands of Australians living with chronic debilitating nerve pain. It's when it's misused that problems arise. It's um, a fantastic drug when used appropriately. It's the best drug we have on the market for neuropathic pain. Regional patients are often prescribed pregabalin when they have pain that's not responding to available therapies, even though it's often not what the drug's indicated for. And that's why Queensland is planning to add it to its prescription monitoring program, QScript, to make it harder for people to doctor shop for the drug. For Ms Palo, the effects of the drug are ongoing. Life's good, really, really good now, but I still do have serious mental illnesses, um, which I blame Lyrica and I always will. Anyone with concerns about Lyrica should talk to their GP. Kelly Lazaro, ABC News.